Okay, so in this next video, um, we are actually going to add in our first sensor. Um, we're going to actually do that inside of our drivetrain. So if I kind of just go to my drivetrain subsystem, um, we're going to add in um, an analog based rangefinder. Uh, the Max Box rangefinder can be wired to this. Um, and when I'm talking about analog um, and I'm looking at my Robo Rio, what we're talking about for this scenario is We've done a lot of stuff with PWM so far. You have a ground voltage and switch for your PWMs and they're just wired in here. Uh, we also have uh, this analog input here and you can see that we have different channels there uh, that our wiring guys can uh, wire in analog inputs. And so that's what we're talking about here. Um, just moving forward though. Um, so the first thing that we wanna do here um, just like we've declared these other things, we want to declare an analog input. So I'm just going to grab my code for that. Um, and then we're just going to call it rangefinder. Um, and I'm just going to declare that. Oh, right here, then on a new line. Uh, so private final analog input rangefinder equals new analog input. And then we need to give it that channel. Um, and just like we did with PWMs, we need that analog input channel. So um, obviously, just like we've done in other videos, we want to do the quick fix here, import that analog input library. Uh, and then I have this rangefinder that I want to put in constant, which is going to be the number, the analog number for that rangefinder. So I'm going to hit the quick fix, and I'm going to create a constant rangefinder in constants. Um, and let's just pop over to that uh, rangefinder. I'm just going to set it to... Uh, zero, but I'm going to move this and reorganize this a little bit up here. Under, underneath my uh, PWMs, I'm going to put analog inputs. And then I'm just going to have rangefinder set to number zero. So my wiring guys can know that's where you wire things in there for that. Um, okay, so back to uh, the drivetrain. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to to grab raw voltage from that rangefinder, and then we're going to use that distance. Now it might not be an accurate distance, but it is a distance that we can use uh, to develop a set point. So um, we're going to just build um, another function here right underneath that drive forward. And we're actually going to end up using that drive forward method within our new um, drive to distance method as well. So I'm going to grab that as well. Um, that I previously created. Um, let's go down to uh, drive to distance. I'm just going to grab this. Copy. And right here, paste that in. Okay, so I have that drive to distance. Um, actually, one thing that I don't really like about this, I've got everything else initializing in the constructor. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just copy that and then I'm just gonna only oh I don't want to do that undo um and then I'm going to only uh, declare it here and then down below here where I'm where I'm initializing everything else in the constructor I'm gonna initialize that rangefinder there. Okay and so down here um the function I didn't scroll too quickly there uh, I'm just going to add just right underneath that drive forward function and we're going to call it a public boolean. So notice that unlike a lot of our other functions that we've been doing uh, and just giving them a void and giving them no return type, uh, this uh, function we're going to give the return type of boolean. Okay, so public boolean drive to distance uh, and then we're going to take in double the distance that we're going to drive to and then we're also going to take in the speed that we're going to go there. Um, this function is going to also include a while loop where it loops, okay, um, or it's going to drive forward while the rangefinder get average voltage is greater than the distance, which is going to be like our set point distance. And then we have here uh, that drive forward. Okay, so that should be... Um, uh, I should maybe call this something other than just distance. Uh, so I'm going to call it set point distance. It's a little more descriptive in what that value is and makes uh, our code a little bit more readable. So I'm going to call it set point distance. So well, 
the get average voltage is going to give us um, that um, range from the range finder. And then as long as that's greater than that set point distance, we're going to drive forward. But when we get to that, we're going to stop and return true. Okay, so you're going to understand a little bit more of this when we add the command. So we need to add a matching command, just like we've done with everything else. So I'm just going to go file. I'm just going to save for right now. And then let's go down to um, my commands. And like we've done with all the other ones, we want to create a, create a new class or command. And I'm going to make this new command, and I'm going to call it matching name drive to distance. I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So our drive to distance, um, the first thing that we need to do is obviously we need to include the drivetrain, which is the subsystem. Um, this pattern should be starting to become familiar to you. Okay. And then I'm going to, of course, add that class and then I want to do drivetrain drive train dt and inside here I'll just click say drivetrain equals dt and then add requirements drivetrain and my constructor is set up okay so that looks good um, now this is um, where we're going to add some more kind of variables up here. So I'm just going to grab those um, from what I've done before. Drive to distance. Uh, I'm just going to have a private boolean finish. Add that in below my declaration here. And then we're going to also have uh, the one method that we're going to declare inside of the initialize. So this is a little bit of a unique sequence of how we're going to handle uh, this drive to distance. So inside the initialize, we're going to set that finish value, which is currently set to false up here, to drive train, drive to distance. We're going to add that quick fix for constants. You can see now we don't have a set point forward set yet, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to quick fix again. That's going to add that very or that value to constants. So set point forward. Let's go and set that right now. Uh, I'm going to say I want it set to 1.5, and hopefully that corresponds fairly closely to 1.5 meters. So right now set point forward set to zero. I'm going to set it to 1.5. I'll have to play with this value. I find these range finders not always. Um, the most accurate, um, but that's okay. Um, I want to go back into drive to distance, and then we have constants autonomous speed, which was already set inside the constants there. We already had an autonomous speed that we were using for a previous um, command uh, drive forward timed. You can see that's set to, to 0 0.4. So, um, basically, what's going to happen when we run this method, I mean, more particularly that drive to distance method here, um, if you remember, it has a while loop in there, okay, that's going to loop while our rangefinder is reading um, until we reach that set point forward. So that's going to do that. When it gets done, that loop, it's going to obviously return finish as true. So down here at the bottom, we need to have our return here set to finish so that when it's finished, it is, when this value is true, it is finished. And then we should also have our kind of drivetrain stop in here to make sure that we're stopping this method when we're interrupted. And that's really all there is to that command there. Um, but just like previous videos, uh, we want to uh, initialize um, this inside of uh, the robot container. So let's go to that. And so I'm going to put that with the rest of my drivetrain stuff. Um, so uh, you can see I have that command drive forward timed. Um, I guess I'm going to first declare um, just right underneath that drive forward time private final drive to distance and drive to distance. And we should see that's already 
got that in there that's good uh, let's go down here below um, drive forward time we're going to set this to drive to distance equals new drive to distance we're going to give it the subsystem drivetrain and then we are going to uh, add the requirements here drive to distance dot add requirements drivetrain and just like um, the previous command that we added this auto shoot which we added in the last video this drive to distance is going to only be used uh, in this scenario for autonomous um, you could set either of these to a button and go down here to kind of the button bindings and set them to a button uh, we often do that to test diff different autonomous code um, but for right now they're just going to be really here so that we can call on them later um, in a command group which i'm going to go through in the next video so uh, i'm just going to go file save all make sure that we're good there and then from here uh, let's just do a quick build and then we'll be ready to move on to the next uh, video as long as there's not any problems there okay so our build successful um, we're set up pretty well so that we can start stacking some of these uh, commands in that command group in the next video uh, see you then